What's up everyone? I'm Chris Beatty and you're watching Quality Goods. Today, we're gonna to be talking to Dean Nice at his store Carpe Dean Fashion House in downtown Oakland. Stomping ground of the NBA champs and a vibrant city center full of great places to grab a drink or catch a show. But before we get into the world of custom goods, I need to catch a nice coffee buzz here at Awaken Cafe. Awaken Cafe is located across the street from Carpe Diem on Broadway and 15th. In addition to their coffee roasted in-house, they serve Beauty's Bagels, local craft beer, and some of the best avocado toast around. Drop in some time for lunch or come by in the evening for live music and poetry. Now that I got my caffeine fix, let's head over to the shop. Since the late 90s, D Nice has always found a way to stand out. From running a barber shop to customizing sneakers, his creative talents and entrepreneurial mindset have always opened up new opportunities for him, including one of his latest endeavors, a storefront here in the heart of Oakland. So let's head inside and see what's good. Many of you may have seen some of his custom work worn by Steph Curry during the last NBA championship parade, but others may know him from his custom designs under the FBCC moniker. What started as deconstructing Nikes has grown into a full line of luxury sneakers and merchandise. What's up, Dean? How you doing, man? Doing very well, man. Thank you for having me down. Anytime, brother. So the store looks great, man. Thank you. So I gotta know, your, uh, your work was prominently on display for the world to see last uh, NBA championship parade. Yeah. How did your relationship with the two-time NBA MVP come about? Uh, I uh, met Steph through uh, connections at Under Armour. They had scouted me to work as a designer there. And then also doing a podcast with one of his good friends. That's how we were able to like link up. But he has always he's been following me for a long time. Nice, man. So that might have been your introduction to the world for many people. Right. But you've been doing this since the 90s. Definitely. So since 97. What was uh, your introduction to customized sneakers and garments? Okay, so back in 97, I was a freshman at uh, Queensborough Community College in New York. One day I met this dude named Drew Cartier. He painted his Jordans and I was like, I didn't know he painted them. They just looked cool. I was like, when are those coming out? Man, what's like, that? <laughs> yeah. So it was just like, I was like, where'd you get them? And he told me the paint he used. Ever since then, I just kept going with it. Like I, he hasn't even painted another <laughs> shoe. I just kept buying all the Jordans and changing them all up. And from there, it just kept growing and kept growing. And everybody started catching up, painting their shoes. And I was like, man, I can't paint as good as some of these other people painting the shoes. Like they're drawing portraits on it. So I was like, what can I do next? And that's when I like started uh, adding fabrics to shoes and taking shoes completely apart and rebuilding them. Who were some of your first uh, paying clients? Uh, so uh, some of my first paying clients, I actually did a lot of work for a lot of rappers. Like the first rapper I did uh, shoes for was Jadakiss in the Knock Yourself Out video. He had the Gucci Air Force Ones. I had did the Gucci swoosh on those. I had did, uh, I was in Cormega's video for Get Out My Way. Even somebody from out here, um, Hustler, from the mob figures, he flew all the way to New York, and this was wow. before social media. So just by word of mouth, it just kept growing, wow. and then you know, very cool, man. So Carpe Diem, it's evident in your story that it's something that you've always strived to do. What do those words mean to you? Well, Carpe Diem, of course, the translation is seize the day. And uh, the whole message behind it is like, don't wait for your moment, capture it on your own. You know, so I wanted to have a spot where I can help other people who are trying to do what I'm doing, seize the day on their own. So like, we'll have other brands put their stuff in here and we'll only take a 80-20 split where most retail shops take a 50-50 split. So we take 20%, but off of my views and off of my social media platform, maybe I can help you grow yours. Cause you know, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. How has the evolution of retail influenced how you conduct business here? Uh, with the advent of social media and uh, the, you know, the internet, like people don't really like to leave their house anymore. And I've been noticing that, you know, we just finished our first year and now I'm noticing we get more like 80 to 90% of our sales online. And like the other 10 to 20% is, is walking. You know, so that that's one thing with new entrepreneurs coming up. I would honestly probably tell them to second guess doing the store thing. Yeah. Even with my pre-orders, when I do pre-orders with my shoes, people who live in Oakland buy the pre-order and have to pay the shipping of $25. And don't even come into the store when to you pick just come them into up. the store and save yourself like $40. They'd rather just buy it online. 
I understand that you uh, make some of your own, you make your own samples when yeah. you have them produced. Mm -hmm. Like, what, what led you to, you know, cutting right. your own samples? <laughs> okay, so it started with my first shoe, which is right here, the VB1, which stands for the Valley Victorian, Volume 1. This is my first time ever designing a shoe. So I sent the shoe overseas. They made the shoe and it just looked cheap. It looked terrible. I was like, man, then I had already opened my mouth on social media saying, yo, I, I designed the dopest shoe. You guys are gonna love it. And when I seen that, that shoe that they made, I was just like, oh my God, I started panicking. So I asked him, I said, hey, what if I make the shoe myself and send it to you? And he was like, We've never had anybody do that before, but yeah, yeah that, that he said, yeah, that's super easy. They can easy copy something that you send. So then I went to Tandy Leather in Union City. I brought like $250 worth of leather because I wanted them to match the quality. So I made the shoe, I sent it, and then a month later they had the sample. It was perfect, you know, and it was this colorway right here. We actually used the sample to make this mask. Uh, Freehand Profit did. You know, a lot of designers can't do what I do, you know, and that's that goes back to all the way my New York upbringing. I mean, when it's your strong suit and, you know, you just, sometimes you just got to take it upon yourself. Yeah. You're really taking DIY to the next level. <laughs> Definitely. Well, I'm really looking forward to the, your next drops. Yeah. What, uh, what have you got coming up? So, like how we were talking about, um, you know, the whole scale of retail changing. So I'm, I'm opening a new clothing line and it's called Somewhere in America, like this jacket is somewhere in America, we call it Saya for short. And the only way you can buy that is via an app. Like I won't even sell that in this store. It's only gonna be on the app. It's a up, more upscale than the clothes I'm making now, but you can only buy it on the app, you know? And beyond that, it's also what I'm doing with the kids in Oakland by teaching them, you know, how to sew, how to be fashion designers. Because when I grew up, it was like you either had to be a drug dealer or you was good at sports. You know, even though my mom knew how to sew and I watched her make all these beautiful clothes, as a little boy, I didn't want to do that. I thought that was for girls, you know? So now I'm teaching little boys and girls from Oakland for free how to sew. Every other Sunday, I'm in here with these kids for eight hours and I'm teaching them how to sew, you know? So I feel like that's my way of hopefully, hopefully, you know, uh, growing the culture and, you know, bringing up the kids behind me so that 10 years from now, I may see them in this same position and they might be doing the same thing as giving back to the generation behind them. All right, man. Thank you so much for having me Anytime, down again. man. Appreciate you coming through. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of dope stuff in here. I think I got to pick up a few items. Knock so. yourself out, man. All right. I'll be over here when cool. you're done. Cool. All right. And the 3M on the zipper. Who, who does that? I got, I got to have these. I definitely got to see if they have these in my size. Can't come here and not get some of the jersey shorts. Leather bottom Jordans. Might be back for these ones. All right, here all right. Thank you for all right, man. Yeah, thanks again. Come through anytime. All right, all right, man. It was great to chat with the true entrepreneur with roots planted firmly here in Oakland. Thanks again to Dee for delighting us with some great stories. Follow us on Instagram if you wanna see where we're at and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next episode of Quality Goods.